When you size up any group of people, it's easy to tell who's in charge. There's something intangible about real leaders. In all of history, no one has ever projected the authority that Jesus had. People were either drawn to him or they wanted to kill him. For anyone confronting the real Jesus, there was and still is no middle ground. And today, we'll see why. From the Moody Church in Chicago, this is Running to Win with Dr. Erwin Lutzer, whose clear teaching helps us make it across the finish line. We're in a series on Christ among other gods, showing why Christ is supreme. Today, Dr. Lutzer begins a message on Christ's extraordinary authority, why he spoke like no other man before or since. The Swedish film director Ingmar Bergman said that he had a vision of standing in a great cathedral in Europe, standing before a picture of Christ, and wanting to hear some word from outside of the universe, wanting to hear some word from God that might make sense of life. He stood before the picture and shouted, Speak to me! Dead silence. And he said that was the motivation of his movie, Silence. When it comes to hearing a word from God, there is nothing but dead calm. Well, let me ask you something. Has God spoken? If God has not spoken, if God is silent, then certain conclusions follow. First of all, we must be silent regarding morality and religion because we have no fixed point by which to judge morality and religion. We are, as I mentioned in a previous message, like those ants on the Rembrandt painting that notice the canvas and the roughness of the canvas and the change of the colors, but we cannot make sense of the whole picture. There's a second conclusion we must be led to, and that is that our quest for justice, the desire that we have, the cry within our hearts that justice might be brought to the world will forever go unanswered because if God is not personal, all the injustices in the world will never be rectified. I have a Jewish friend who's an atheist. I said to him on one occasion, are you not disturbed by your belief that Hitler is going to have gotten by with what he did and that there will never be an accounting for the Holocaust? He admitted that that was disturbing. But if God is impersonal, there will be no justice. I know that in Eastern religions, the problem of justice is relegated to karma, but karma is a cruel, impersonal law. In karma, there is no grace, and the untouchables of India are untouchable and despised simply because it is believed that they committed some sins in a former life in which they are now in this life receiving their retribution, and even compassion should be ruled out toward them because that would upset this delicate system called karma, hopelessly, viciously cruel. There's a third conclusion, and that is that the great desire that we have in our hearts, the great desire for the ultimate, must ultimately go unfulfilled because then we do not know what God is like and we can only speculate and we are cast back on our own intuitions and our own ideas, never being able to see our way regard to eternal issues. Now the question is, has God spoken? Christianity asserts that God has spoken clearly and he has not stuttered. He has spoken to man. Now let us be very clear in saying that the moment we say that God speaks, that differentiates Christianity from all the pantheism of the East, all the Eastern religions, because the East does not believe that God speaks. 
You say, well, that's not true. Look at all the gurus. Look at all the prophets. Look at all the teachers. But remember that those prophets and teachers are basically only reflecting on their own experience of the ultimate, the impersonal ultimate. They are trying to speak the unspeakable and know what they believe to be essentially unknowable. Because the Eastern gods always cast man upon himself, and it is within human beings that we find all of these supposed insights. God or the gods of the East do not speak. You say, well, what about Islam? It's a monotheistic religion. They believe in one God. There is but one God, and Muhammad is his prophet. Yes, the Muslims believe that God is capable of speaking and that God has spoken through Muhammad. But Christianity is far different from that. Christianity says that not only does God speak through prophets, but also that in his final revelation, God actually personally has come to speak. It is not just that he has sent a messenger, but that he himself has become the messenger. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. The East does not have a savior. The Muslim faith does not have a savior. They have only a prophet. Only Christianity says that God has come. He has spoken and he has acted. Look at what your Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1. That's a passage that you may take a moment to turn to, and I will be quoting many passages today and turning only to few. But notice what the text says about God's speech in these last days. Hebrews chapter 1. God, after he spoke long ago to the fathers in the prophets in many portions and in many different ways, sometimes through dreams and visions and what have you in the Old Testament, in these last days, he has spoken to us in his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. And then it goes on to describe the beauty and the godhood, the deity of Christ. In these last days, God has spoken to us through his Son. There has been an explosion of revelation. God has come.